joining us right now to discuss this, and it's not just an American problem, is Pierce Morgan, host of Pierce Morgan Uncensored on Fox Nation. Pierce, we were talking about this a little mm. in the break and on the five. This is getting worse, and it's not just an American problem. Did we start it? I would say yes, but I would also say that in Britain we've got the same problem of the woke left trying to dominate an agenda, which means that their rights for a tiny minority of people are now supplanting the rights of the vast majority. And I want to ask, when I hear that poor mother there talking in the way that she did, I want to ask, where are the rights of girls and women in all this debate? Why are women being erased? Why is the word woman now an offensive term? When did we allow biological males to dominate women's sport and wreck it irrevocably, potentially? When did we allow young girls to be in some kind of locker room and have biological males walking in and derobing in front of them? When did we let this happen? And how can this be happening just after the Me Too Time's Up campaign, which went on for years and was supposed to be all about protecting women? Who is now protecting women? And I address this as much to other women as I do to you or to men. We can say as much as we like about this, but so many women have been cowed into silence. They're too afraid to do what that mother did, because if they do put their head over the parapet, they get shot down and called transphobic. Which is nuts. You think it's 1919 or we're living with yeah. the Taliban in charge, but it's not. So the administration is not just jumping on the transgender side. They are staying, I don't know, straddling the fence. Listen to what KJP said, mm -hmm. talking about this thing or really not talking about it. Listen. Mm -hmm. The Department of Education proposed a rule, as you know, uh, that gives schools the flexibility to establish their own uh, athletics uh, policies. And so while establishing uh, guardrails, right, to, to prevent discrimination against transgender kids. And that is something that is in incredibly important uh, uh, that the president wants to make sure that we also uh, do that as well. They can't figure it out. They want the school districts to figure it out. Well, she, she also, they don't know what's good. Well, she also went on to say that the issue of trans athletes in women's sport is very complicated and there's no easy solution. No, it's not it's complicated not and there's a very easy solution. You ban them. Canada today in cricket, I know your favorite sport, but the Canadian national cricket team has picked their first transgender cricketer. This is a cricketer who, as a male, until two years ago, was incredibly unsuccessful, never got anywhere near international competition, will now be representing Canada. What does that mean, Brian? That means that a biological female has been deprived of the chance Absolutely. of playing for her country because a biological male who was nowhere near good enough as a man to compete at that level is now considered an elite sportswoman. Uh, it, is, it is completely outrageous. If I'm right, track and field got ahead of this and, and they said, no, that's not going to happen. Some sports have done it. All sports should do it. And by the way, it's not about being transphobic. I want trans people to have the rights to fairness and equality that we all enjoy. That doesn't mean that in their campaign to get those rights, they damage and diminish and destroy women's rights. And so I say, look, in sport, very simple. You have another category for trans athletes, completely new category, or they compete against their biological sex as many of them used to, less successfully. Why This is so easy to solve. I wonder why we're not. In the UK, they say this, we want to take it. NHS doctors are told not to ask trans patients their names because it's rude, intrusive, and insensitive, according to officials. So you cannot ask them their gender? You cannot ask them their name? Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, look, a little thing, but when I fly on British Airways, obviously, always British Airways, but when I fly on British Airways, there used to always be a soothing monotone British accent that would say, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your British Airways yeah. flight. Now they're not allowed to say ladies and gentlemen because there might be somebody who identifies as something else on the plane who might or might not be offended. To which I say, what about my right to be called a gentleman? What about a woman's right to be called a lady? When did those rights get completely destroyed at the altar of trans activism? I want their rights to fairness and equality, but I want my right actually to be called a man and a gentleman. I want women to be called women. I want girls to be protected. I want women's sport to be protected. And I think the vast majority of people in America and Britain and right. other countries agree with me. But California is not only doesn't agree with you, they're suing a district 
that says, no, we will tell your parents if you're a 12-year-old girl and you want to be a 12-year-old boy, and they're being sued. That's the Chico Unified School District. Well, you've seen this case of an 11-year-old girl who apparently was a little confused at school, and the school said, right, uh, we think that you, you know, you're secretly wanting to be a boy. We're going to help facilitate that. We're going to allow you to identify as a boy at the school, and we won't tell your parents. The parents sued and have won $100,000. That's how this is going to change. You're going to see a lot of lawsuits, because I've, I'm a father of an 11-year-old girl. I've got three older sons, but 11-year-old girl that same age. I watched the interview with the mother and daughter on Fox uh, today, I think it was. <clears throat> and what was striking? This girl who had been confused is now not confused yep. at all. She's a girl. That was right? Fox and Friends. Isn't right. It? Yeah. So that was your interview, I think. And, and oh, I remember thinking, right, so that's my point. They are not emotionally or psychologically or physically equipped to make a decision about what they want to be. The parents should be involved in that decision. And the schools hiding it from parents, in my view, is a form of state-sponsored child abuse. What if your school had that policy where your daughter goes to school about not informing the parents? What would you do? I'd go completely nuts. I would identify as a raving lunatic. And I would go in there, and I would pull her out, and I'd say, she's not coming back here until you stop this woke nonsense. And most parents <clears> would feel that way. Now, the idea that my daughter could somehow be a boy at school and that was hidden from me as her father, I would find completely outrageous. And I think most parents think that. You know what I also would think? Most teachers agree with you. Yes. And they are subjected to the teachers' unions that said, you step out of line, you lose your tenure, you lose your position, and they don't get paid enough anyway. Too much corporate American, and I include unions and all of that as well. Too much corporate America and corporate Britain and corporate Canada and other countries, they're getting bullied into taking positions on this stuff, which tailor to a tiny minority of activists. And they are forgetting about the vast majority of people who actually lead common sense lives and who want basic principles about the society they live in to be upheld. New, uh, one New Jersey teacher came out and said they were told by the school district mm -hmm. to hide the fact that a child told them about they wanted to transition. So what do you do if you're the teacher? You speak up and do the right thing, you lose your job the next day. And the thing is, it's easy to say do the right thing, but when you've got kids at home and you've got to make a living, it's tough. We've had a, a clinic in London called the Tavistock Clinic, very infamous clinic, where they were performing these surgeries on young kids who wanted to transition. What would have happened with that 11-year-old girl? Right, who thought she was a little bit confused, who was probably a bit of a tomboy. Remember tomboys? The, Remember how prevalent that was? A lot of girls would go through a phase of being tomboys. The idea that they would then be seized by society, absolutely. put into a clinic and mutilated before they had a chance to really even go through puberty and work out for themselves what are they actually going to be in right. life is, I, in, to me, inhumane. I don't know how well you studied my biography before you come I've on. I've read it 15 but, times. Right. So, I want to be you. Right. And, 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 you, are, you are the Mick Jagger of television presenters. You are the right. Duracell bunny. You're the man who never sleeps, the man who always right. works. You are a template for all of us. Okay. And I, I, you should just identify as a Duracell bunny. I, <laughs> well... If I could finish my thought, <laughs> I totally got it. In fifth grade, I declared I would not, uh, I would not be interested in a girl that wasn't good in sports, like Tatum O'Neill right. in Bad News Bears. I don't know if that you carry that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Tatum O'Neill would have been forced to be a guy. Of course. All right. Thank of you. Of course. Did you enjoy, I enjoyed your first appearance on Laurie Ingram's show. You, I, you, you know what? She wasn't what I expected, but ah, she's ah, now apparently, ah, Laura is now identified as Brian <laughs> Kill Me. Just for which, today. Which, if you think you haven't heard a horrifying uh, transition enough, uh, this is as bad as it gets, people. Evidently, it's okay to come on the show without a tie on, too. <laughs> well, you know what? I took my lead from you because you normally go al fresco right. when you're doing these kind of shows. Right. And then you come up all tied up, and I feel, now I feel a little bit naked. Right. You, you're, you're not naked. <laughs> just so you know. Pierce, thanks so much for coming in. Hey, great to see you. Uh, great to see you, and great I'll see you hopefully next week. I Keep fighting the fight on this stuff because this has to be won. Serious this stuff. is a culture war which is damaging the integrity of women's rights in sport, in uh, privacy, in, in safety, all these things. It has to be won. Women and girls have to be protected. You done? I could okay. carry on for another, <laughs> right. Actually, <laughs> no. I don't know, right. another segment, maybe? Coming up. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.